Jonathan here with Souls Awaken. How are you guys doing? Coming to you from our rehearsal space. Let me show you here. This is our PA system that we play through. Right there, there's my beautiful bike. This is my uh, mistress. <laughs> I love this bike. Yamaha Roadstar 2004, 1800. Very cool. Look at this. Put that cross on there. Representing my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Got my guitar wall there. Got a couple guitars hanging down here. What am I doing with all these guitars? Well, I am doing this video to share with you um, how I get my guitar tone for Souls Awaken. Now, this is uh, at the request of Dennis Adams. I told him I would do a video, so I'm going to stick to my word to that. Uh, so, Dennis, I will tag you in this post here so you can see it. But I want to let you guys know that I've had multiple people ask me about my guitar tone. And it's always an interesting conversation because uh, guitar tones are tricky, man. Us guitar players, we like to chase guitar tones. And to be honest with you guys, when you hear, especially in a, in a recording, you're listening to an album and you, and you love that guitar tone, you want to get that, chances are you're probably never going to get that. Um, not because you can't dial in to what they're dialing into, but when you're listening to a recording, you got to remember that stuff goes through compression, it goes through EQ, and it goes through mastering. And when you're doing mastering, mixing and mastering, like that changes the sound of the guitar. So you can get close, but once you record it, then it's going to change then also. So just remember that when you're chasing guitar tones and you like what I show you, um, and I'm going to play a little something for you on this bad boy right here um, to show you the sounds that I'm getting, uh, just remember that it, it might not come out exactly the way you're hearing it from me. But nonetheless, I'm going to share this with you guys, and I'm going to start out with my rig. Now this is... A friend of mine came to a, to a, a show we did. Absolutely loved the sound that I got. Was talking to him about it, and he ended up going out and buying the same rig that I have to try to get the same sound. Now, no doubt, he is getting a killer sound out of his setup, but it's still not going to be the same thing that I get because I am playing through different equipment than he is. So this is a Mega Booga, or excuse me, <laughs> Mega Booga. Mega Booga, Mesa Boogie Triple Rectifier. Traditional, with a traditional slanted cab. Now, if I'm being honest, which I should always be honest, I would rather have just the, the, the non-slanted cab. It produces a deeper punch, and I like that. So, But this thing sounds killer. I still love it. That's what I'm playing through. And if you've heard me play live, except for the first time you've heard me play out of this thing here. A um, couple things I've done to this. I When I got this amp, I bought it used, and I immediately changed out all the tubes. I changed out all the tubes because the, the previous owner had taken some of the tubes out to lower the wattage. Because I tell you what, you guys, this thing is on not even 25% output and it is freaking loud. When I play this for you guys so you can hear these different tones I'm getting, it is super loud and I I've never even had this amp on 50% at a live show. It's too loud. So if you want to get the full tone of your amp and you have a tube amp, specifically a tube amp, then you what you need is called an attenuator. I don't have one of those because the one that I need that will suit the amount of power coming out of this amp costs about a thousand bucks and I don't have a thousand bucks to be spending on an attenuator. Maybe someday, but my broke butt ain't got it. So it's not going to happen. Um, so it's at about, it's sitting under 25% right now. And uh, there's a couple things I do with this head to change the, the natural sound that's coming out to get what I want. I'll talk about the EQ here in a minute. But what I want to show you guys, and this is really cool if you have an amp that does this. So let me get back here. See if I can do this. Ugh. All right. 
got a couple things going on. All right, you see this here, this rectifier switch. You've got vacuum tubes and silicone diodes. Now, this vacuum, it would be like more your traditional metal sound, all right? These vacuum or these silicone diodes give you more of like a modern punch that's tighter. It feels like it puts some kind of compression on it, but you lose some of the saturation from the game. And I also have this, the power output, I have it set from spongy. I have it set to bold. Now, let me explain to you why I do that. So I changed those back there because that uh, the your traditional vacuum tubes produces a fantastic, great saturated sound, especially if you have the power output set on spongy. Uh, just it's just a great saturated sound. However, what I like to accomplish is a quick, punchy, um, deep, poppy mids type of feel. And that's more like of your modern metal feel. And so that's what that's what those two settings together does. Now I will tell you, you lose some sustain with that, and you don't have as much saturation present in the gain, but you still got plenty of gain there. It's just a really clean gain, and I love it. And if you can get those uh, sounds out of your amp and your cab, great. All the power to you. I'm not jealous at all. I hope I hope a lot of you are able to gain something and learn something from this video. Um, but so that to the power outputs of the back of the amp, and I've got three channels here. I rarely use the clean channel, but I do use the red and the orange. The red being more of the heavier, the orange being a little lighter, and then you know your clean channel. But don't let that orange channel fool you because it is a beast, I'm telling you. You could play metal straight through that orange channel all day long. Uh, but one of the things I do with my EQ, now on this orange channel, let me show you. On my EQ, look how much bass I have. None. My bass is out. It's cut out of the mix. Because the thing of this setup, the thing about this setup is that it naturally produces a low end sound. So when you're playing out of this cab and this head, you're getting punchiness no matter what you got on it. You're getting low end no matter what you got on it. And it's going to cut through there. So when I change it over to that orange channel, as a matter of fact, I'll put a link to the song Center of the Sun in this post. If you go listen to that song, pause this, go listen to that song and pay attention to two things. Pay attention to how my guitar sounds in the verses and pay attention to how my guitar sounds in the uh, choruses. And the choruses, I'm playing out of that orange channel. And it sounds killer. I mean, it's just like that that saturated kind of heavy rock screaming kind of sound and that uh the the red channel and the verses it's that deep metal punch low kick you in the where you don't want to be kicked kind of sound and i love them both and i like to bring that type of flavor to to what we write um in souls awakened because i think they sound great together so that's good for like a lead channel it's good for different types of sounds you want to get, different type of songs. Um, and in the red channel, I have pretty much, I, I still don't have a lot of low end on that. You know, we guitar players, we like to try to get all that low end punch in there. But what I've learned is that, and a lot of this comes from recording. You can learn a lot about your sound if you mic up your cabinet and record that bad boy. Um, I used to have the low end turned up like, I don't know, three o'clock, two, three o'clock, sometimes four o'clock, have that treble turned up in the mid scooped a lot. Uh, and that sounds like crap. I'm telling you, it might sound good to your ears when you're alone practicing in your home or wherever you're playing by yourself, but you put that in a mix, man, it just doesn't cut through. Uh, and I've heard some, you know, bands that do that and it just, you don't hear that cut through. So I want to let you all in on a little secret that Maybe you all already know this, and I'm the slow one. I'm behind the curve here. But uh, when you want those heavy chugs, chunks, and chunk, 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 you're not going to get that from a lot of the low end. 
you're going to get that from boosting your mids. And I know it sounds, it doesn't sound right, but it, that's the truth. On my red channel, I have my base set only at 12 o'clock. Let me show you. This is my red channel. That's my base, 12 o'clock. I almost have the mids in the same spot, and I barely got the treble turned up. <clears throat> so my treble's turned up a little bit higher than my bass, and I've got the mids almost the same too. As a matter of fact, I think I even like it with the bass, even on the red channel, turned down a little bit more. I've been playing with that. And so that leads me to another thing. When you've heard me play live, you've heard me play to a different setting each time I've played live. <laughs> so, man, I, there's different things. I've got pedals that I change when I play. So I'm always changing things. So this is, it's, and it's not just this uh, perfect tone that I'm going after. I just have fun. I just change things up. So, but the important thing is, is to remember what you change it from. And I'll tell you exactly what I'm talking about here in a minute. Let me show you my guitar pedal. All right, this is my pedal board. I built this thing because the previous pedal board I had just wasn't big enough anymore because I wanted to put that drop pedal in there. Um, so when it comes to... I am a fan of being a purist. And what I mean by that is not that I'm a snob about it, but if I'm playing through an amp that I think is going to give me a good sound, specifically a tube amp, if I'm playing through a tube amp that I want to get a specific sound from, then I'm going to do everything I can to not affect the natural sound and natural tone that comes out of the amp. I want to try to capture as much of that as possible and do only what will help those natural tones and harmonics coming out of that tube amp to help boost those and capture them and make them more pronounced. So that's what I tried to accomplish on my pedal board. Um, it looks like a <coughs> decent sized board, but I really don't have much going through it to change the tone. Let me show you. So I built this board. I put the lights around it. Th these freaking lights are awesome, man. I love this thing. I can't wait to play live with this. I haven't played live with it yet. But it, it does purple. It does blue. It does different flashes. It does breathing effects. It's cool, man. Uh, but I just have it on this red right now that has some sparkles to it. <clears throat> okay. So, first thing we got here is my wireless Line 6. Great product. I will tell you, though, if you plan on 6 wireless pack, I have the G30, I think, something like that. Just go up just upgrade and get the g50 get the one whichever one that is the metal casing just get it dude because once i got this the uh, the, the plastic casing on it they're notorious for this it broke and so now i have to use a velcro velcro strap on my um guitar strap to keep that the uh, battery compartment lid shut it's very annoying but goes through my wireless signal straight to my tuner just a cheap Tuner, I don't need anything really expensive. This tuner costed $10 used. All it needs to do is tune my guitar. <laughs> That's it. Volume pedal. I do not have the... Um, uh, there's a gain knob and stuff on, on the back of this. I don't have that engaged. That's all turned down. Like I said, I don't want to affect the tone. I want to keep the tone as pure as possible. I have this uh, Morley Wah pedal. It does change the tone when you engage it, but your tone is pretty much the same as it goes through because it's got a true bypass. This drop pedal, I haven't used this live, but I have recorded with it and I play around with it here in the house. It's a true bypass, doesn't change the tone. The only other thing, the next thing that would affect the tone at all is this mixer. And I will tell you guys, one of the single most greatest things you can do for your pedal board is get a mixer get a mixer because you can shape however you want your guitar to sound there's a couple different ways you can do that you can run it uh through the effects loop i've seen guys do that you can run it as the first thing the first signal that your 
um, from your guitar before your volume pedal, you can run it at the end of everything and change the frequencies um, and uh, the EQ of your tone after it goes through everything. But I like to keep it just after the immediate effects that I would use, such as a wah before it hits anything else. You want that wah pedal before it gets to anything else. Your volume pedal, obviously, your tuner, volume, my wah, and this drop pedal, I want that to capture the most purest signal I can possibly get. Then, the EQ. Because I want my EQ to be changed and affected before it moves to this tube screener, TS9. Now, if there's anything that affects my tone the most, it's just that TS9, that tube screamer. Um, it tightens things up. It boosts some of the clean in it. And it gives you a killer sound. And the way I get the sound that I get is I leave this drive all the way down. I don't even engage that. Now, I want to tell you guys something, though. If you like to play with killer, I'm talking about killer pinch harmonics take this tone knob whoop, put it up there and take this drive knob and just just crank that up about a quarter of the way about 25 percent you're going to get some killer pinch harmonics on that some of the songs that i do i crank this all the way up and this about halfway i've played some with this about right here because i'm really wanting to capture those mids in there but my normal setting is right about here. Now, one thing I will say about this setup is I have found some uh, settings that I really like on my Tube Screamer and on my EQ pedal. That's why on my Tube Screamer you saw those marks on. See the marks by the knobs? Because I want to go back to those spots again. However... On this bad boy, it would be difficult for me to put marks everywhere. So what I encourage you to do, play around with these things. If you're going to get one of these MXRs, which I do recommend, they are great EQ pedals, I recommend not getting this one. I recommend getting the newer one. They're usually like silver in color or nickel, brushed nickel. But these older ones have more noise in it. The newer ones have better noise cancellation, so I really recommend getting a newer one. Um, so yeah, that's what I got. That's my tone. Oh, one more thing here. My noise gate. That does shape the tone as well. Now this is a G-string, Decimator 2 G-string, um, arguably the best, or if not the best, um, among the few of the best noise gates you can get. And I love this. I love this noise, this G-string, because I, I used the NS2 for a while, a boss, and it can do a good job, but if you can even read this online. It is a tone sucker. I mean, it sucks tone. That's all I can say about it. You have to adjust all of your tone to get something that you like. Now, what, what I will say that's good about it is it does a great job. It, it doesn't do quite as good a job as the, the G-string that I have, but you can still get killer tones out of that, um, out of the, the Boss NS2 um, noise suppressor. You just lose just a slight bit of the tone, not even enough for anybody to notice who's listening to you play live. The only person that's going to notice is you. So take that for what you want. I like the G string. I like the NS2. I like the G string better. So that's what that is. And I've got my gate set pretty high. And the reason why I do that is because I want quick shutoff. I want that quick, fast silence. And this is something that maybe some of you guys know about. But this helps you get those awesome chug sounds. Those fast, clean chug sounds. Whether you're doing a, a riff. Or you're going. Whatever you're doing. Something like that, if you crank up your noise gate just a little bit more, it'll kill some of your sustain. But if you're able to play clean with some good chugs, 
doing that will like increase the quality, in my opinion, of how those chugs sound. And uh, man, I'm not jealous at all. I hope that you can learn from this and, and, and gain something by that and make your music better by something that I can share with you. So that would be cool to actually hear from some of you guys um, if any of this have ever helped you. The only I have that I use for now is this Harmonist PS6. And what this does, it does harmonies. It does octaves, it does uh, pitch, and it has some other tunings on it, like a detune. And uh, I use that in some of the songs. And it's a pedal that I run through my effects loop. You gotta run that thing through the effects loop. The only other pedals that I might wanna have is a looper pedal, just a really simple um, start and stop looper pedal, which I'm thinking about getting the, uh, the Ditto X2. That's probably what I'm looking at. And possibly a delay pedal. Not even sure if I wanted a delay. I don't use any reverb. Don't believe in reverb. <laughs> no, for leads, reverb is really good, but I really don't use reverb. So that's my setup. It's really simple. Nothing you know special going on there. Um, but maybe that helps you out. Maybe you got something that uh, you can share with us. Would love to see that take yourself a video or comment down below and let us let us hear from you what you got um, right now i'm going to play you something out of both of these channels and let you hear everything that i was talking about so get this set up here all right so here we go this is through the red channel on all the settings that I just shared with you. the bass at 12 o'clock and I have the mids about the same and the treble maybe one o'clock that's it that's all I got here <laughs> the bass cut off there's no bass in this and if you listen to that song uh, that we just released recently center of the sun you'll hear this channel in the chorus like this is the channel I use in the chorus and in the verses I use the red channel so this is the this is the orange channel and I'll play a part of center of the sun <laughs> Sounds good. I love this channel for lead. Uh...
<laughs> messing up all over there on that lead. Um, but it sounds great. You could play metal all day long out of this orange channel. Um, but uh, I use it mostly for to accent, to boost mids in certain parts of the song. Uh, we have one song called The Day Our Savior Died, and I use this channel for that. <laughs> Get great pinch harmonics out of it. Um, and that's with um, with zero bass in it. Mids boosted and treble boosted. Going straight through, getting the purest sound I can out of the head with using only what uh, pedals that only, in my opinion, enhance what's coming out of here, like the tube screener with the gain turned all the way down and the EQ pedal. The most important pedal on that board, in my opinion, is the EQ pedal. Oh, man. Getting up is getting more difficult. What's going on with that? Put that on standby. Come back over to this camera here. And that's it. I know this is a long video, uh, but I don't know how to do this in a short time frame where I could talk to you about what, what's on my board. And this is just like a, a, a brief overview anyway. <laughs> uh, talk to you about what's on my board, my pedal board, um, what through, how I get the tones that I get. Oh, I didn't talk about my guitar. This is an LTD guitar, M1001. I love this. My brother bought this for me. I was freaking blown away. It's like, bro, you bought me a guitar? <laughs> so nice of him. Um, this has EMG 81. EMG 81. Say what? EMG 81 on the neck and on the bridge? Yeah, bro. EMG 81 on the neck and on the bridge. Dude, crazy up in here. Love this guitar. Sounds great. The guitar, your tone. The strings that you play out of will affect your tone. Uh, the amp you play out of will affect your tone. The um, pickups you play out of will affect your tone. Even if you have the same pickups, sometimes all pickups don't sound the same. The EQ on your amp will affect your tone. The EQ on your pedal board, which you should have, will affect your tone. And any kind of boost, like a tube screamer, or a distortion pedal, all of that will change your tone in some way. And your tone will change just by having multiple pedals on your board. <laughs> so all that affects our tones as guitar players. Everything we put on our board affects our tone. You don't get as much of that with a solid state amp. Um, what I don't mean is that you can't get different tones out of a solid state amp. Um, what I'm saying is that the tube amps, the dynamics of a tube amp just lends itself to be sweetened up in ways that a solid state amp doesn't. Um, I like tube amps. I also like solid state amps. When you're at a live show, you won't know the difference. Honestly, you're, you're not going to be able to tell the difference. In a recording, you're not going to be able to tell the difference between a good solid state amp and or a tube amp. And as far as that goes, you won't be able to tell the difference in a good amp sim from a recording software. <laughs> Because I have some of those on, on my uh, recording software, and I've got some amp and, and, and cabinet sims in there that sound frigging killer. <clears throat> the only time you notice a difference is when you play them side by side. Uh, you know, maybe somebody can out there can identify when they hear a solid state or a amp sim from recording software. Um, sometimes maybe you can. Is it that big of a deal? No, man. And it's much smarter for live shows to have something like a Kemper or a, he a Helix, something like that, because, I mean, come on. This is a no-brainer. This thing is heavy. This thing is heavy, too, and it's extra space, and it's more stuff to worry about breaking. When you have a Kemper or when you have a Helix, yeah, you could drop it and break it, but you've got one item you're taking out there one item. And so I don't hate whatsoever on people who use solid state stuff. I think it's great. I personally like the tube amps. 
Um, I love the natural harmonics that come out of them and the tones that I get out of them and how I can shape them with just a couple minimal pedals. Um, so yeah, there we have it. That's my setup and how I get the, the tones that I get. If you got some feedback, you got some comments, post those comments down below. I want to hear about you what you got i want to learn from you there are other people that can learn from you so please 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 help us out comment on this video and uh if you learn something from it i would love to hear from you as well maybe you heard something that you've never heard before and uh all that from an amateur like myself i tell people i am at best a mediocre guitar player <laughs> and the thing about that is is i mean it <laughs> so we can all learn from each other, man. If you got something, drop it in the comments. We'd love to hear from you. Hope you guys have a good rest of your day. Uh, God bless and take care.